Bosnian Serbs and UN officials say a Serb withdrawal from two strategic mountains overlooking Sarajevo is almost complete. But Bosnian radio said the Serbs made no move overnight and actually reinforced some positions. Serb leaders agreed to withdraw by 4 p.m. local time today. Bosnia's Muslim president has refused to participate in peace talks until the pullout is complete. While Sarajevo remained quiet, the three warring factions continue to fight in central Bosnia. Shelling and small arms fire are reported in several cities. Meanwhile, preparations continue in Sarajevo to airlift wounded civilians to other countries. Kent Barker has details. It's a nightmare, said one official when confronted by the situation in the Sarajevo hospital from which the evacuees were to come. Certainly that appeared to be the reaction of the RAF doctor and nurse sent in to prepare the wounded to be flown out. But it soon became clear that there was a world of difference between the UN list of people to go and those they thought were the most urgent cases. We've got a list, said Wing Commander Dr. Andy Mitchell, but it's not the list people in the UK were expecting. I'm not in a position to decide uh, which patients uh, come or go at the moment. But I, I, um, you know, the, as I said earlier to you, the, the list we have is almost exclusively Arabs. And we came on this trip uh, originally to take back children. I would hope that if the hospitals in England uh, keep that offer open, then there may be the chance still to get these children out that we've seen this morning. Only two out of 17 people selected by the UN were children. Many were described as walking wounded rather than critical, and some were not even currently resident at the hospital at all. Yet the British pair found what they described as another Irma, a three-year-old with meningitis and fluid building on her brain. The UN, who compiled the list of those who were to leave, reacted angrily as the row grew, saying some adults were in greater need than children, and some of the most severe cases were too ill to travel anyway. But the Prime Minister John Major, who ordered the initial evacuation of Irma and set in motion the wider operation, was reported to be furious that the UN list was at best incomplete and out of date. He ordered his officials to sort it out as a matter of urgency. At Stansted Airport, a 25-strong team of British doctors and specialists were preparing to leave for the start of Operation Irma. A chartered Russian transport plane had been loaded with medical equipment and could, if required, bring back up to 50 stretcher cases. It goes first to Ancona in Italy before venturing into Sarajevo. And the earliest any of the wounded are expected back is Sunday. Headline Consumer News is next.